Shabbat Shalom. We are in the fourth of these uh, parashas, you know, and, and uh, this one, Bayera, appear. It's a one of the portions that our dear rabbis, our sages, they scratch their heads over and over. And this is one of the portions that I see more, uh, what I call it, distraction, to s not to say that they uh, do not agree <laughs> <laughs> in this in, in this subject one of my favorite rabbis uh, Mo Moises uh, Maimonides or Rambam he has a problem with this portion and by basically he said that this is a dream this is an apparition you know, that was and even they ate in the dreams but you you know sometimes I hear some of you telling me your dreams and you, some of you has a very vivid dream. And uh, sometimes you, you even eat in your dreams, you know, and you don't even know, uh, and you think you have done it. Uh, then to me it's not something to go too far. The, but uh, in this portion, I would challenge you to check something. The words appear, seeing, looking, is over and over and over and over again. It repeated those words. And it's to, to bring us something important. You know, many people think that they believe by faith. But the truth of the matter is that sometimes we need to have some kind of special uh, situation that happened to us that we have been able to to go through and has helped us to establish our own set of beliefs. You know, it's very easy to say, I believe or I don't believe. But the question is about facts and to put in, pro in, 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 in front of us this idea about if possible or if not possible. I always define it, miracles, in this simple way, you know? Remember that for many years, and still today, I struggle with simple belief. You know, I am not, the, I am not an easy believer, if we, we, we put it in this way. I tell everybody that I doubt even about my own shadow. And you know, and I don't follow anything. My shadow follows me, I don't follow my shadow, okay? And, uh, and even sometimes I don't know if I have a shadow. I doubt. Then, uh, it, to me, doesn't come easy to believe. You know something? I I marvel about certain people like you that I call it the the, the flyer, the butterflies, the flying nuns. Usually, they are women that they are in the air. We have some men too here, flyers too. I don't want to mention their names, but but you know uh, they f are constantly on the on the skies floating on the air. They walk on air. And I walk very deep. And if I can walk, I cannot walk on water, sorry. <laughs> you know, I will be deep in the, for, for in the bottom of the ocean. Then, uh, what it really means when God appeared, God talked, we saw, and, and, and things like that, what the Torah wants to tell us. And here is something very important, that sometimes we do not give a uh, soul to this. We are not only material, and that is the problem that we have. You know, many of us, we only consider what we can talk and supposedly what we can see. But uh, have you ever asked yourself, any of you, has you been able to see your thoughts? Any of you has been able to, to, to make your words when you speak, make them physical? The, the only thing, later on, maybe you put in a book and you see the letters. But when they come out, it's nothing that you can hold it. It's only you listen. And when you say, uh, when somebody's telling you something, whatever, maybe an abstract uh, idea, 
What do you say after you understand? Ah, I see. Okay, Eureka. No, now I see. Then we need to understand the Torah in, in a way more ample than we are trying to make it as a tunnel vision. We need to look at it in a special way. And the Creator is trying to give us in this narrative beautiful teachings that are going to hold forever. You know, our sages, blessed be the memories, they trying to explain it, for example, the first beginning of this parasha about what I would call it, the, the gift of hospitality. You know, it's interesting there is a Midrash that say that these three men were three angels. Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael. The other Midrash use other other uh, angels, but this is the most common one, you know? Michael, you know? Micha Moha, is it me, uh, uh, who is the creator, the greatest, the definition of the, the greatest, uh, that is the, the, the greatest angel, we can call it. Then comes Gabriel, what a beautiful name, no? Gabriel. And what it means, Gabriel, you know, Gibor. Mighty, strong, that is the God of the world, the, to put things in place, you know, to act in the name of the Creator to make the things correct. And finally, we have Raphael. Rafe, Rafa. He is a healer, he is our doctor, he is our physician. <coughs> He's the one that takes care of us. And these three elements are presented to show us the Creator and how He cares for His people and to know way. And always He is looking at His creation. You know? We have this concept that has been sharing with you about Behirah of Shi. Well, uh, to me, is the greatest gift that a creator gave us to us as human beings. No other creature, no other thing that has been created by him has Behira Hofshi. We are the only one. And I always say that Behira Hofshi convey the idea of responsibility. In other words, you are responsible for what you do. You cannot blame your neighbor or somebody else. And the Creator is trying to give us this idea with Abraham Avinu. He chose Abraham Avinu. Many people, they say that the Creator chose Abraham Avinu because of his qualities. You know? In other words, if, if Abraham Avinu didn't have those beliefs or those things, he wouldn't choose him. And that is to give it credit to us as human beings. And this comes the idea that the choosingness of the Creator depends on us. But what we do not understand, and sometimes we cannot go beyond the physical world, is that the Creator knows our hearts and knows our intentions. And He knows who we are. You know, he didn't look at Abraham Avinu because he was a perfect person or because we had exceedingly uh, uh, had a, a faith that was beyond any understanding, but uh, so a man who wanted to do what is right in his times. And we need to always understand his times. You know, I mentioned to you last week that there was a, a, a law in the, in the steel of Hammurabi, and I don't know if you are familiar with that, there was a, a written law that say, if you have a concubine or you have a, a wife, and, and you expel the, the concubine, your wife, and, and your child, that child cannot inherit it from you. 
And many people say that that's what Abraham Avino was doing when he expelled uh, Isaac, because uh, uh, Ishmael, I'm sorry. Per, so what is Isaac? Ishmael, that's his, well, I need to be careful. Ishmael, and he expelled Ishmael because Ishmael couldn't inherit it with Isaac. No? Then, but everything, that we as human beings, we have been able to accomplish is because there is a creator who made us. And even when we do wrong things, it's part of the freedom that the creator gave us. And we can fail. In this portion, we are going to see Abraham Avinu we doing wonderful things and at the same time making mistakes. It's not to us to construct him as a, the superhuman being, but uh, to see his humanity and to see all the way that he was. Another thing about the, the beginning of this parasha is that our sages tell us that w the reason that these three men came to visit uh, Abraham Avino is because he was just coming out of his Brit Milah. You know, to have bring me at 99 years old, you know, it must be very painful. And at that time, there was no anesthesia, and there was no surgical uh, uh, thing that you, you, you can have, or they put, they put you something. You need to hold it, you know? And they said that they came to the worst time at the third day. That's what the, the Midrash tell you, you know? But there was more pain than ever in the middle of the heat. And let me tell you, you need to be in Israel to know what is it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, there, uh, from, from, from June to August, boy, trying to go someplace else. Anyway, uh, or at least that you have air condition. Now, you, got, you are there in the middle of the heat, and he sees this three men, and with his, uh, with his surgery, he starts running behind them because he wants to show them hospitality. He was so delighted and he wanted for these men to have at least a time to rest, to cool off, to, uh, he was going to wash their feet. That is, is something amazing, uh, if you understand the culture of the time. And then he killed, I asked one of the young men there to kill a beautiful calf. The best, only the best. We use people who has only the best, mm -hmm. okay? And the best. Uh, uh, and, and, uh, and then he prepared, and he prepared with, and make it with something very beautiful, with butter and milk. <laughs> two hours apart. Oh, two hours. <laughs> then he waited three hours at least, no? But that to tell you about the discrepancies of our sages and our, our uh, rabbis, because we, we are always trying to cover up, or we are always we trying to explain the incongruences. Uh, you know, you don't need to explain. And you're going to see that at the end, the rabbis, they, they say, they react and they trying to explain the mind of the creator. Because the creator doesn't commit mistakes, it's men who commit mistakes. And in this case, it was Abraham who committed the mistake. He forgot the loss of Kashru. And you're going to see that's totally a misunderstanding of the Kashru laws what the sages made us to believe. Because three times in the Torah, it's written that you shall not cook the kid and the mother's milk. Three times, two in Shemo and one in the Barim. Okay? That's it. And if you look in and you study correctly and you, if you are a, a researcher, you're going to realize that there has a reason. And he's talking about two things. 
is talking about idolatry and is talking about mercy, rahamin, eat with the animals too. But the, the interpretation that we give it, we can give any interpretation. And as humans, we give interpretation. And as humans, interpretation becomes the law. And that's why we are in such complex a uh, world in the religious world. And that is the reason that they tell you there are so many religions now. And even in the official religion, there are sub-religions. You have different sects. You know, uh, if, if you analyze all the religions, you're going to see that most of the religions, the main religions, they have different groups. They are divided by sects. Now, why they are divided by sects? What I'm telling you, the men do not agree. And then the question is, who is the one that is right? The right, the middle, or the left? You know, and, and, and you need to look for the scripture, and then whatever side you have taken, you are right. You know, in Judaism we say that to use three opinions. And what do we say? You're right, you're right, and you're right too. Why? Because each one is looking from different perspectives. But here there is something about Abraham Avinu. He was faithful to his calling. And he acted the way that he was. And through the process of his relationship with the Creator, he was learning things from him too. You know, we are going to see in this parasha again, at the end, when he goes to Gerard, to the Phili to Gaza right now, that not, not now that we are having so many rockets from, Ga from Gaza. No? And, and sometimes I admire, to be honest to you, I admire the defense forces of Israel. Just yesterday, I'm sorry I make this, uh, I, I am getting out of the, the subject, but I need to make it. In the United Nations, they have condemned Israel because they sent a bomb to a house and they killed eight people, among them three children, two women, and then two men, you know, that must be the, the worst uh, criminals in the world, but, uh, that, and, and you know what? But uh, no one has said that what? Hamas, or no, this time is not Hamas, it's the other one, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad is doing, sending more than 500 rockets now, and is still sending, is wrong. Because they are the small people. Israel, because it's a big one, you know, needs to be considered to the, to the children. That is injustice about what the world is today. And this is what we, Abraham Avinu, we need to learn about righteousness and justice and to, to do things accordingly. In this portion, we are going to see something that is very interesting about being asked by Sarah to get rid of Ishmael, you know? And getting rid of Ishmael what is the problem? He didn't want it. That was his child too. But the Creator say, do what Sarah tells you to do. And then he gives something special for Ishmael. We have learned in chapter 16, in the last week, about what Ishmael was going to be. He was going to be a little, a little bit uh, out of his mind sometimes, 
He would like to fight with everybody, and he would find enemies wherever he could find. And if he couldn't find enemies among uh, outside, they would find enemies inside. And they would destroy themselves, too. We are seeing that. And sometimes we don't need to take the scripture seriously, but we need to see that in the Torah there are many things that we need to take time and to think about it. And this is what I call you about this, this portion to be a very difficult portion. Because there are things that we at this moment in, in the 22nd century, we call it 21st, but I like it, 20, why we like uh, and we disagree with certain things. How could Abraham Avinu allow the thing? And you know what? Look, he interceded for Sodom and Gomorrah. He interceded for Lot, his nephew. He interceded for other people. But for his two children, he didn't say anything. Because we are going to see at the end of this portion, the Akeda, the binding, and which the test, the final test, according to our sages, our father Abraham has ten testing process. And the last one, then, who passed with brilliant colors was the Akeda. And you cannot hear one time Abraham Avinu begging for his children. When they were going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, the most corrupted city would you destroy a city that are 50 good people? What about 45? What about 40? What about 30, 35? What about 10? Finally, he couldn't find anything. And here also, there is a concept that we need to start learning. And the concept is about what I call it intercessory prayer. Because of his intercession to God Almighty, he was able to say his nephew, Lot, was because of him. Not because Lot was righteous. He already showed how unrighteous he was, you know? We don't, I don't need to explain to you. He didn't have any merit. The merit was in the, in the merits of Abraham. That's the reason that we in Judaism, we believe in the merits of our ancestors, in the merits of our parents, in the merit of our people who has been sadiq, righteous, sadikim. And I am going around and around. Because what I need to tell you is that we start making theological ideas instead to understand what the Creator wants to take us. And this is the problem when we, is, we are more uh, upset about if he was a man or was an angel. Uh, 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 how did he destroy? That was an atomic bomb or what, what it was? You know? We're worried about those things. And we cannot see, and this is the, the key of this parasha, appear, seeing, and looking. We cannot see what the Creator is trying to tell us. You know? What, it, what is His desire for us as a humanity? And he is saying to us, the worst enemy of man is man himself. The most destructive 
person in the world is the evil ones. And we are responsible. You know, yet there are evil people. But the, the rest of humanity are responsible for doing nothing. Abraham Avino trying to participate, trying to intervene in the best way that he could. And he trying to help. And when he had this last test about his son, that it's so difficult to explain it, so difficult to under, even to understand how you're going to explain something that for you yourself is difficult to understand. But I say that the Creator gave him a test. And this is when he graduated on his test. Because he knew. And that's what we need to bank on us. God's promises are forever. Maybe we are not going to enjoy at this moment, but they are going to be fulfilled. He promised Abraham Abinu that through him there were going to come a lot of people, and that through his seed there were going to be a blessing to all the nations. And he knew that the only seed that he had in the, at this moment that was the promised seed that was Isaac. And had the, no, the promise has been fulfilled completely. I need to come this, this God has promised me. The question, when Sarah heard that she was going to be a mother at the age of 91 years old, and 89. She laughed, and she couldn't believe it. And what, what did God say? Haji Pale, me Adonai Dabar? Is there anything impossible for the Creator? Keep that in mind about the faith of Abraham. He already went through that. He here, he had a son through something impossible. And he, the Creator was asking the life of his son, he knew that he's going to bring it back, in one way or another, because he already made the promise. Then sometimes, when something has been reassured, it's not crazy to believe in it, especially when it comes from the Word of God. We say, see to believe. There are many ways to see it. And that's what I would like for us as a community, to grow in our trust in the Creator. What I call it, going from Emuna to Bita Hong, to really Take our faith in all something about words. It's about doing action. That is where we can learn from Abraham Avinu. His faith was not a faith of only, yes, I believe. It's acting upon the faith. 
Have you seen all the circles I have done? Only to tell you that to believe is not something easy. I start telling you that I have even problem with my own shadow. And to me, to believe is not something easy. But through my years, the Creator has shown me many ways how accurate and how real He is. Even I cannot see it, but you know what? I can hear Him. I cannot see it with my eyes, but I can see it with my inside. That's my, my, my taking of this morning. Because uh, I can explain to you theologically many issues, but I don't want, because somebody else who is smarter than me is going to tell me that I am wrong. You know? But you see, here is not how smart I am. Here it is how real I am. And this is where it counts. Has God appeared to you? And I will say to you many times, in many things in your life, in situations that you didn't expect it, He has appeared and you have seen Him acting in your life. Keep that good way. Shabbat shalom.